In this section, you'll learn more about the files that are produced by ModelMaker for this natural language model. In addition to the model.json and the binary files that you're used to, there are two extra ones you'll need to understand as well. The first new file you'll have to get familiar with is the vocab file, which is just short for vocabulary. This odd file with no extension is something from ModelMaker that shows you how to encode words in the sentences so that the model understands how to use them. You'll learn more about this shortly. However, on this slide, you can see the first 10 lines of this file. Essentially, you have some word on the left and a number on the right separated by a space. This number will represent that word when using it with the model. Now you can view this file yourself if you wish at the URL shown. Next, you've got the labels.txt file that's also generated by ModelMaker. This contains the resulting class names that the model will predict. You can see it simply has the values of false and true in this case, as the model that you'll use predicts if a sentence is spam or not, represented by the false and true listed here. Now you can imagine that if you have a model that does something like predicting what language it thinks a sentence was, then this file may contain a list of all the languages it's able to recognize instead. In the same order, it would output such predictions. All right, let's now write the code to load and use the model. For convenience, I've hosted the model files for you so you can use them directly in your project too. In this section, you'll only need to update script.js that you've been working on in the prior section, so make sure that's open. The following code will be added to the end of what you've already written. First, define two new constants and a variable to hold the loaded model. The first constant, model underscore JSON underscore URL, is simply the location of where the model is hosted. The second constant, spam underscore threshold, is how confident you want to be before marking something as spam. Here it's set to 0.75, which represents 75% confidence or higher, which will be the deciding factor. Next, create a function named load and predict. This function will take a single tensor 2D as input containing numerical values that represent words that you want to use in a prediction. Moving down, you can now check if the model has already been loaded. If it's not loaded, you can await tf.loadLayers model as you've used before and pass to it the model JSON URL that you defined above. Next, you can call model.predict as you've done before and provide the input tensor that was passed to the function as an input. Now at this point, print the results to the console to inspect the output predictions. Finally, now the function is defined, you can call it with some rather cryptic looking example data. Now, don't worry how this was created just yet, just test it for now to see that it works. Also note the to-do at the end of this function that you just wrote, which is where you write extra code and logic later on. At this point, if you run the code, you'll see the tensor printed to the console as shown for the example input data. And just like you've seen before, these two numbers represent the probabilities of what the model thinks is the classification. But what do they represent? Well, if you go back to the labels.txt file you learned about earlier, you saw that the first entry was false and the second entry was true. This directly corresponds to the order of this output tensor number. So in this case, the model is saying it's 98.38% sure that the input values provided are false, which for this model means not spam. Essentially, the labels.txt file allows you to identify the class of each value of the output tensor so you can then interpret what the outputs mean in the context of classification. So you've got data going into the model and you're getting valid outputs, but what exactly was that big bunch of numbers that you sent as an input and how do you convert sentences to be in that form for the model to use? Well, for that, you need to learn about tokenization. So head on to the next section to see how that works.